is comprised of these two jobs that have been completed this job at 3820 and this job at 2790 giving us the 6610 so that's what we that's what we know so far we don't know the sales number but we know it's probably going to be more than that hopefully we don't know exactly what it is and then we're going to credit uh the finished goods so the finished goods is it's going to go down so if we think about the sales number then a, a book problem will often give it to us in practice we would have to determine of course what our sales price could be if it's a construction company we may have uh, set a bid at the beginning of the of the process and and now complete the bid or um, we might have set the price at the beginning of the process and we may use the job cost sheets in order to determine what the what the price will be for example if we were doing like a construction company or any type of job cost system some kind of uh, transparent system the most transparent way to do this would be to, to set up an invoice saying hey look this is what we actually think that job 15 the one we worked on with you was for direct materials here's the direct labor here's the overhead which is us allocating all those other costs that are like in the bucket that allocates out that adds up to 3,820 and then tell our customer what we mark up for what's our revenue proportion to this if we say that there's a 30 percent markup for us for our revenue we would say that it's it's for this job 3820 times 30 percent point three that's how much we're going to earn here plus the cost three eight two zero or we're going to charge four thousand uh nine sixty six or we can do that with one calculation that's going to be the three eight two zero times one hundred one hundred percent point three thirty percent markup so that's the four thousand nine sixty six so that's one way we could make the invoice which is a nice way to do it transparent way to do it oftentimes but it's not the only way we could make the invoice the sales price is not tied directly to these sheets unless it's whatever we plan to do with it so if we have these two jobs then our journal entry for these two jobs if we have a 30 percent markup that's what we're going to assume here is 3820 plus 2790 that's the cost of those two jobs right here and we're going to mark that up 30 percent so i'm going to say that times 1.3 so we're going to sell them for 8,593 then that's how much we're going to invoice for so then we're going to say that the receivables is going to be that 8,593 and we're going to credit the sales for 8,593 again if you, if you look at a merchandising company you probably think of this journal entry first because we were concentrating on the sales all the times so with the sales price and then we'll think about the cost of goods sold here like book problems may not even ask you for this journal entry even though it's the thing we're most focused on in practice because we're focused on you know earning revenue getting money uh, but w this whole problem has been focusing in on this journal entry this component of it so just be aware that when we get to this last step um that we have to figure out the the sales price and it's not tied directly here a book problem is going to have to give it to us in practice we will of course have a system of determining what the invoicing price will be and it may be based on these job cost systems but not necessarily uh, directly applied to them so now we will record the journal entry to our general journal so here's the accounts receivable it started at 180 we're going to bring it up in the debit direction by 8,593 to uh, 188,593 that then found on our trial balance then we have the sales here so the sales was at zero it's going to go up in the credit direction by 8,593 to 8,593 that then being also found on the trial balance and then we've got the cost of goods sold it started at 380 that just being the the closing out of the factory overhead to make it zero at the end of the time period remember and and that happened in a prior presentation and then we're going to say that this 6610 is going to bring the balance up to 6990 so there's our 6,990 here it is on the trial balance and then we've got the finished goods so the finished goods started at 8,736 it's going to go down by 6,610 to 2,126 that 2,126 also being found on our trial balance so what's happened here is just basically our normal type of journal entry 
once we get these numbers, just our normal journal entry, when we make a sale as it would be if it was a merchandising company, recording an increase in sales, which increased net income, and the other side being the accounts receivable, people owing us money, we, accept, we expect to get a check in the mail, hopefully, and then we recorded the cost of that, uh, of that inventory, bringing the net income down. So of course the net sale is this number minus this number. That's what we really kind of net income is affected by or gross profit, net income and gross profit by this journal entry. And then we recorded the reduction in the finished goods, just as we would in a merchandising company, reducing the inventory account for those inventory items that were sold. So if we look at our completed you know, worksheet here and related to our trial balance, we can see we can still tie this this information out to what we have now so we've got our our closed jobs is just going to be this 2126 that's the only one that's still closed but not shipped and therefore still in the um finished goods then we have the amount that uh is open that's going to be those two green ones i can't decide where to put the calculator it's going to be these two green ones so it's going to be this uh 2390 plus the 2024 that's going to be the 4414 that being found here so there's the 4414 now again the cost of goods sold we can't normally track all the way through but uh you know if we if we adjust the time periods and go through the, the cost sheets in this case we're, we're, we could say that it's the uh, 3820 plus a 2790 is going to be that 6610. Uh, Doesn't tie out to the 66100 here. Why? Because it's off by the under over applied overhead that we had. That's going to be off by this 380, the under over applied overhead. So again, the, the cost of goods sold isn't going to be able to tie out to our job sheet necessarily, not just because of that under or over applied overhead, but also because it's a temporary account and we're going to have a whole lot of, of shipped jobs over time as months go by uh we of course will have a lot of ship jobs so we could try to add up the ship jobs that were completed during a certain time period but typically what we what we do here for sure is we want to support the uh open jobs and with the work in process account and we want to support the finished jobs with the job accounts and uh so these two accounts need to be supported by job cost sheets as we sell them of course we will then use these job cost sheets to determine what the cost of goods sold will be